Alrighty, so let's talk a little bit more about uh, spotting scopes. So before I start, once again, two cameras, two lapel mics. So hopefully I will uh, have some usable video out of this. Another uh, modification to the way I usually do this is I've got a, let's say coffee in here, which should help me talk. Yeah, coffee is good. Um, I'll make this fairly quick. I've talked about uh, most of these uh, spotting scopes before. This one I haven't so much. Um, the guys at your optics or the, the Hansel distributor, they were nice enough to loan me this Hansel Spotter 60. It's 20 to 60 millimeter uh, spotting scope with I think a 72 millimeter objective. It is uh, just remarkable uh, but the reason i want to talk about this is that it is an example i've got three spotters here of completely different optical design and i'll talk through in just a couple of minutes how they compare what would work uh, better for what and why uh, the handsold is a flp design folded light path is uh, the term has been used i don't know i think leopold were the first to use it but a few companies make them Basically what happens, the objective is here, the, inst uh, the light comes in here, there's a mirror here, it bounces off of the smear, comes here, there's another mirror here, it reflects again, and the focal point is somewhere here. So the focal length uh, of the objective lens system of this thing is this, this, and this all together. So it's a very comparatively long focal length and a fairly short overall length scope, but it is tall, right? So it's kind of a periscope type arrangement. And then there is a built-in variable eyepiece. Eyepiece is not removable. This one goes from 20 to 60 power. Uh, they also have spotter 45 that goes from 15 to 45 power. Okay. Um, four thousand dollars, four and a half thousand. It's ridiculously expensive and ridiculously good. If I could afford it, it would not be going back, but I can't spend that much money. So it's going to go back. This thing is just awesome. Um, Athlon Chronos Tactical 7 to 42 by 60. Um, you see, obviously, the construction is different. It's all kind of lined up. And the way this thing is built, it's basically like a rifle scope, right? So there are no real, it's not supposed to be, I don't think, there are no real uh, prisms in here. It's a little bit more like a rifle scope, with a, and it looks like a rifle scope. There's an objective, and there is some sort of a lens acting system. That's how you get that uh, magnification range, because from 7 to 42 is very broad. Uh, mag range and there's an eyepiece um, the erector system doesn't go doesn't do wind elevation adjustments right so uh, it's but I, in terms of internal elements and construction it's closer to a rifle scope than to other spotting scopes and this vortex razor this is a 65 millimeter razor hd uh, that is more like a, uh, a more of a traditional uh, uh, spotting scope construction where you have your objective lens system, there's some sort of prism in here, either a roof prism or a poro prism or whatever else here. It looks like the roof and uh, one more reflecting surface. I don't know, I haven't opened it. So, But it's some sort of a prism that uh, is used to you know, inverse, invert the image and make it look upright. And then there is a regular eyepiece. Eyepiece is removable. This is a 22 to 48 power variable, a wide angle, and there is also, they also have a uh, 18 power long really fixed eyepiece which i love it's just an amazing eyepiece but um, the basic thing is this internally they're using different optical components to get the image to look right to uh, invert it make it upright a prism here a lens system here and uh, mirror reflections uh, here okay that has um in principle none of that would matter too much but in practical terms, it has uh, it has some uh, ramifications on what you see uh, through the scope. The most obvious one is that you can have a long focal length objective in a compared to a compact scope uh, here, right? And the objective is offset uh, from the eyepiece. For example, if you are in a situation where somebody might be looking at you or even worse, trying to shoot you. It's not necessarily a bad thing to have your head a little bit lower than the objective, you know, just in case. It's probably easier to replace a spotting scope than your head. Um, uh, this one is kind of lined up and it's a very streamlined thing. 
and this one is a sort of a traditional thing there are compromises that come uh, with optical design and they pertain primarily to depth of field and to the field of view all other things being equal a traditional spotting scope like this one uh, will have a wider field of view they'll usually have a fairly short eye relief but they will have a little bit shallower usually not always this one is actually quite good a shallow depth of field uh, than something like this but wider field of view and the lens system like this is the hardest to make with a really wide field of view right so this usually the field of view at the same magnification will be comparatively narrow but what you get out of it is a crazy magnification range this spotter basically lives in my range bag and the reason why it does it's pretty decent optically but it's not nearly as good as this guy or this guy on some other conventional spotters i have but a the way it's lined up it's easy for me to pack it easy for me to wrap it in something to protect it it's uh, and two the magnification range it goes to seven power on the low end so i can basically use it as a handheld monocular uh, if i'm so inclined and also it has a reticle so i like spotters with reticles another thing that this has is a fairly long eye relief if you see where i am with this, so here i've got the full field of view i'm on uh seven now see so i'm gonna go on 40 power here I, here i get full field of view i am on 40 power to get full field of view i have to be really close to this thing and here i am on 40 power I have to be also fairly close field of view here is wider it's in the middle here's the narrowest but uh, um, i don't have to be as close to the spotter depth of field by far the deepest here okay this one is not bad at all this one's pretty good for a conventional spotter but not great why does depth of field matter well the church 700 yards away there was just a hawk sitting on top of the cross so i was looking at the hawk and i could see the hawk well with well enough uh, uh with uh, any of these but i'm looking at the hawk while i'm looking at the hawk for shooting sports you'll be looking at bullet trays bullet impact or you'll be scanning an area to see something well hunters also do that um for those applications i don't want to mess with the focus any more than i have to right so there having a great depth of field is a big deal especially for spotting if your friend of a, a friend of yours is shooting and you're trying to watch the bullet trace if you have razor thin depth of uh, field right at the target it's not going to help you all that much right you want to be able to pick up a bullet trace fairly far back and kind of track it as it gets to the target and if there's a miss and you're in an environment where you don't see you know the dirt come up if there's a miss you want to be able to track that bullet trace with a shallow depth of field scope tracking the bullet trace is hard it's not impossible some are better some are worse etc but for all the spotters that i've seen to date for watching the bullet trace this is probably the best right uh so that's effectively yeah that's really effectively uh effectively that when you select the spotting scope think about it if you're a birder it's one thing you will care about color and a lot of other things at the most but if you're a shooter what do you do with it i it's a yellow porsche huh. i watch the bullet trace i watch for my friend's impact and you know to show impact correction and i look for wind and when i'm trying to ascertain wind i look for wind at the target and up close and halfway through and try just to get an idea of the aggregate wind and i don't want to rack through focus for all of that i really want to set up behind a spotter and just look and the best one for that is this guy well it's also optically superb and with a conventional spotter i have to mess with the focus one now this has a very nice focusing ring it's e very easy to use uh, i like it a lot i've used this for spotting uh, impact it works really nicely this has more depth of field so there's something to it anyhow Thank you for watching. Um, I hope you got something out of this. I uh, really appreciate your time. And uh, if you have any questions, you know where to find me. Ask uh, in the comments or on my website or on one of the forums I frequent.